Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with i, or the imaginary unit. So we have x squared equals i, and we're going to be solving for x values. We could also write this problem in different ways, such as how do you find the square root of i, but since that's multi-valued, I just wanted to write it as a polynomial or quadratic equation. So we're basically going to find complex roots of i. And I'll be presenting three methods, even though there might be a fourth one. Please let me know if you do find one. So let's start with the first method. For my first method, I'm going to do something that is pretty standard for when you're dealing with complex numbers. And that is uh, calling x a complex number. So obviously I could have used a z here, which wouldn't make a huge difference, but a lot of times z is the right variable uh, for complex numbers. Anyways, so let's go ahead and write x as a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, a plus bi represents a complex number. And notice that if b is zero, we end up with a real number, which is also a complex number. So let's go ahead and square both sides. We get x squared equals a plus bi squared, and that equals i. So let's go ahead and expand what's on the left-hand side, and we're going to simplify it and set it equal to i, and then we'll, we'll find a and b values from there. Okay, so if you expand the square of a sum or a binomial squared, you're going to get the following, a squared plus bi quantity squared plus 2abi. But I usually write it like this. Anytime you square something like a plus b, let's just say we don't have any i in the equation, I usually do a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. This is especially helpful if you're kind of trying to complete the square or, you know, sometimes trying to factor. I find it helpful. Anyways, so let's go ahead and square this. This gives us a squared plus now, how do you square bi, right? b times i? You square it like this, b squared i squared. Easy, right? Plus 2abi, don't forget to multiply by i, equals i. So at this point, you might be saying, hey, 2ab needs to be 1. Okay, that's easy, but let's go ahead and simplify this first. What is i squared? By definition, i squared is negative 1. If you don't know anything about complex numbers, at least you should know that i squared is always 1. Okay, so now this gives us the following. a squared plus b squared multiplied by negative 1 is going to bring in minus b squared plus 2abi equals i. Now this equation makes not uh, that doesn't make much sense unless you write the i as a plus bi or x plus yi or whatever. Something plus something i in the standard form of a complex number. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write the i as... 0 plus 1i, right? Okay, that's what it means, doesn't it? So it's a pure imaginary number. It doesn't have a real part. It only has an imaginary part. But having compared these two numbers, we do know that if two complex numbers are equal, if they are identical, then the real parts have to equal each other and their imaginary parts have to equal each other. In other words, this is supposed to equal 0 and this is supposed to equal one. You gotta be careful when we say imaginary part of a complex number, we do not include the i in it. It's always a real number. Make sense? So from here we get the following a squared minus b squared equals zero, which implies a squared equals b squared. And we also get two a b equals one, which implies a b equals one half. So we got ourselves a system of equations which should be fairly easy to solve. There's a couple different ways to solve it. You can definitely isolate b from here, which is basically what um, Black Panther Ben did in his video, and I'm also going to share the link down below somewhere. Uh, but I'm going to use a slightly different approach. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work with the first equation first. a squared equals b squared has two different consequences. Either a is equal to b or a is equal to negative b, right? If two numbers are opposites, their squares are equal. That's why when you square both sides in an equation, you may get extraneous solutions. Anyways, so the second one fails real quick because AB is positive. Therefore, A and B have to be the same sign unless A or B is zero. This is not going to work. It's not going to work if they're zero. So 
this is not possible for real numbers. Complex, different story. So A must equal B, and since their product is one half, think about the square root of one half. So A must be equal to B, and that equals the square root of one half, which can be written as one over square root of two, but I, I would like to rationalize the denominator and write it as root two over two. Now, this is great because we got the values of A and B, and remember, our square root was written as, did I say square root? Okay, whatever. I just wrote X as A plus B I, so now X is what satisfies this equation, so I'm looking basically for the square roots of I, so from here X becomes uh, root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. But this is just one of the solutions because a complex number has two square roots and the other one, let's call this x sub 1, x sub 2, is just going to be the opposite of this. Why? Because if you op uh, square opposites, you're going to get the same thing. Okay, makes sense? Let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick. Now, for my second method, I'm going to do the following. We're trying to find, so to solve this equation, remember, we're basically trying to find uh, the square root of i, right? You probably know, and this came up in a recent video, that 1 plus i squared is equal to 2i. So in other words, if you square root 2i, it should be 1 plus i, or the opposite of that, which is negative 1 minus i, right? So this should give you an idea, because I'm trying to find the square root of i, so all I have to do is divide both sides by square root of 2, right? Because square root of 2i can be written as square root of 2 times the square root of i. If that's equal to 1 plus i, divide both sides by root 2, and guess what? You got the answer. Isn't that nice? So here the same thing happens. Square root of 2i is equal to negative 1 minus i, and then divide by square root of 2, and you got the answer. Okay? So you got two values if you separate them and... Work, uh, work out the denominator, you're going to get the exact same thing, root 2 over 2 plus 1 over, I mean, root 2 over 2i. <laughs> what am I talking about? Okay. Um, root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i, or it's opposite, right? So those are going to be the roots. That's the second method. Pretty good, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and talk about the third method. Uh, third method, and please let me know which method is your favorite. So the third method is going to look like this. I'm going to write it in polar form. How do you write square root of i, uh, I mean i in polar form? To write i in polar form, you've got to remember i is 0 plus 1i. So 0 0.0,1 represents i on the imaginary axis, in other words. This is my real axis. And the distance from 0 is going to give me r, or the absolute value of i, which is 1. So now I can write a complex number as r times e to the power i theta theta being pi over 2 in this case because we're basically on the imaginary axis, right? And r is 1, so our number i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2. But notice that I put parentheses because pi over 2 is the principal branch. If you want to write the whole thing, I would just add multiples of 2 pi to it. Make sense? Now I'm going to go ahead and take the square root. Square rooting is very easy. All you have to do is raise it to the power 1 half, which basically divides everything by 2, right? So it's going to be like this. And what is that number? What does that number represent? For n equals 0, this is e to the power i pi over 4. You can also write it as cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. And the other one is just the opposite because we're going to be using 5 pi over 4, e to the power i times 5 pi over 4. That is going to be cosine, blah, blah. Let me just uh, skip that part and write the answer directly so that we can be done with this real quick. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.